Hello our dear viewers and welcome to our show. Today we're going to be talking to you about a very popular topic and that's meal frequency and if it plays a role in um, your weight loss and your metabolism and other factors like these. Now a lot of people are really not sure about certain meals, when to have them, whether to have them or not in regards to weight loss in particular and your metabolism. So that's what we'll be mostly covering today. And the first topic that comes to mind is do you really need breakfast to lose weight? And does breakfast kickstart your metabolism? So you hear so many people telling you from when we were kids that you need to have your breakfast and breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Now what research is trying to show us that that's not necessarily true. The idea came from the fact that a lot of obese people have been studied in the past and they realized that most of those people that had problems with obesity usually did not have breakfast. Now that doesn't mean that because they didn't have breakfast they became obese, it's probably just part of a general pattern of an unhealthy lifestyle. So having breakfast doesn't really make you gain or lose weight, especially that it depends on what type of food you choose to have for breakfast. So it's really important to be careful about your choices more than you're careful about whether you had that meal or not. My advice is if you are someone that's used to having breakfast, make sure you focus on healthy options. You know, if you're someone that's not used to having breakfast and you can carry on your day without breakfast, that's fine. Just make sure you don't become starving by the time lunchtime comes around and you overeat at lunchtime. That's really the main issue with skipping breakfast and skipping any meal really in general is that when the next meal comes into play, you're usually really hungry and you will tend to overeat in that next meal. So you do kind of want to give your body steady meals, you know, in different progressions to make sure that you're getting enough energy and you're not really starving or hungry by the time the next meal comes. Make sure you choose healthy options. So like we said before, whole grains, low fat dairy, um, lots of fruits and vegetables, and these will help you maintain your hunger and your weight. Which is worse, skipping breakfast versus a donut? Ideally, we'd all eat a perfectly balanced protein and fiber filled breakfast every day. But if you're not a morning person, you may have better luck finding Ryan Gosling riding a unicorn than making sure you get all your pre-noon nutrients in. Ripping pectorals aside, eating breakfast is a wake-up call for your body that says, it's okay to burn calories now, burn baby, burn! And you do not want to press snooze on your metabolism. Eating a healthy breakfast will also give you the energy for your morning projects and of course your ongoing flirtation with the cute guy in IT. Hello. So which is worse? Turns out skipping breakfast is actually worse than downing that pastry. At least a donut will give you fuel to swing by the IT department for no good reason. One plain glazed donut is about 260 calories, and if you combine it with some protein, like skim milk, your blood sugar spikes are regulated. Eating that donut is certainly better than starving, which can lead to overeating, forgetting where you park, and just being a plain old hangry bitch to your coworkers. Now we have more tips to give you on meal frequency, so please stay tuned. Welcome back, our dear viewers. So let's take a look at other theories that have come into play in regards to meal frequency. So one of the theories that are that you need to eat frequently and snack frequently in between meals to keep your metabolism high and boosted. Now science has proven that that theory is not really true. So you don't really need to be focusing on certain meals and you don't have to have certain snacks. Again, like I said previously, the idea is you don't want to leave yourself being too hungry. So getting to that hunger state is just really bad for you because you will become um, or you tend to overeat at the next meal and you will lose control at your meal options. So the idea is, is that if you need snacks or if your meals are very far apart, so more than six hours apart, definitely insert a snack. You want to try to eat every three hours. And that plays into the idea that you want to try to regulate your blood sugar. Because once your blood sugar spikes or crashes, these are where you get the tendency to eat more or to crave more of certain foods. So basically what you want to do is make sure that every two and a half, three hours you are eating something 
and it can be as simple as you know a couple of slices of cucumber maybe one small fruit a handful of nuts these are all snack options that you can have that won't leave you very full but also won't leave you feeling very hungry by the time the next meal comes into play but if you are the type of person that's okay with not eating for four or five hours and then you can have your lunch meal or your dinner or your breakfast and you don't feel very hungry or you can control your portion sizes then you don't really need to start inserting these snacks because what inserting snacks could do is increase your caloric amount at the end of the day the idea is you want to maintain a certain amount of calories to lose weight and not be gaining weight so that's the main idea about weight control it's not really how many meals you have so as long as the meals and the snacks you have are within a certain caloric amount you'll be fine that's basically the idea of where snacking comes into play so you can reduce your meals and increase your snack options or you can leave your meals as is and completely avoid the snack now stay tuned we have some more tips to give you before we end today's episode Welcome back, our dear viewers. So let's take a look at another theory that comes into play with meal frequency. So we've heard a lot of people here and it's a very popular form of a diet and it's called intermittent fasting. So some people choose to skip certain meals to jumpstart their metabolism or to shock their body and hopefully lose more weight. Now that theory has not been proven correct only because skipping one meal will not give you the same effect as intermittent fasting. Now with intermittent fasting, usually what happens is for about 24 to 48 hours and sometimes 72 hours, so three days, you reduce the amount of calories you're taking in. And what that does is that puts the body in starvation mode and it will make the body use its own stores for energy. And then you eat again to replenish those stores. When we skip a certain meal, that's really not enough time for our body to use whatever it has stored. And you need to keep in mind that with your body, it will use glucose as its first store and fat comes in later on. So you won't start burning fat or using up fat as your stores immediately when you choose to skip one meal so it's not really the best idea now my suggestion is if you are someone that enjoys having large meals or meals that have very high calories and you know that by having another meal you will overdo it with your calorie then you can skip a meal or have something very light again the idea with weight loss is you need to have a certain amount of calories ingested in and you need to burn more than you're taking in to technically lose weight of course the quality of the calories really make a difference in your lifestyle and your health overall so you really do need to pay attention to where you're getting your calories from but if you are craving junk food every once in a while or you know you're gonna have a huge meal coming up yes you can skip the meal after that to make sure you've balanced your caloric amount so we hope you got the idea from today's episode that it's really not about these trends or the meal frequencies that you choose to have it's more about you giving your body sustainable energy throughout the day not really binge eating or starving yourself we don't want both extremes if we are trying to lose weight and make sure we're healthy we hope you enjoyed today's episode and we'll see you all next time